Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Pasco eSchool Virtual Great American Teaching for 2017. I hope you are having an awesome Monday. I am here today with Arielle Reich, who is a theater awesome person um, who's going to share a little bit more about herself very shortly, um, as well as Emily Riviera, who is a student um, in Pasco County. Um, and with that, I would like to share a little bit of information about our presenter. And of course, technology sometimes just does not want to play nice. My PowerPoint closed, so bear with me one second, please. Okay, here we go. I love technology. It happens sometimes. Okay. So, Ariel is a New York based actor originally from Florida. She has been performing since the age of six. She recently graduated from the University of Florida with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting and a Certificate of Arts in Medicine. While in school, she made her professional debut at the Hippodrome Theater in Gainesville and is a proud member of the Actors' Equity Association. Uh, her, what she does on a day-to-day -day basis is pretty cool, and for where she hopes in, her hopes and dreams go, um, she will share with you today. So without further ado, I give you Ariel. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is so cool. Um, I have no idea who's listening, but if you are, thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, as, as Jan mentioned, um, I'm an actor living in New York, and I basically am pursuing my dreams, which is the coolest thing ever. Um, so yeah, I live in New York City and I audition all the time for Broadway and off-Broadway shows and um, I work at a juice place and I am currently in training to be certified to teach yoga, um, which is awesome. And yeah, um, I'm also from Florida. So I went to the University of Florida and recently graduated as was just mentioned with a BFA in acting and a certificate of arts in medicine, which we can talk more about for sure. Um, and again, also, you just heard I've been acting since I was six. Um, a lot of people have a story of seeing a show that changed their life, and in seeing the show, they realize, this is what I want to do with my life. Um, I don't really have that kind of a story. My mom just has told me that when I was six years old, I asked her if I could act, and there was a children's theater around the corner from our house, and so I auditioned, and I played Bomber in The Hobbit when I was six and a half years old, and that was the first show I ever did, and the rest is history. So when I was little, I kept performing at that theater, and then when I was in high school, I did shows, and then obviously in college, I studied, and, um, and then, yeah, I made my professional theater debut, as mentioned, at the Hippodrome Theater in Gainesville, which is not too far from you guys, and then moved to New York, and here I am. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of a general overview of my story, I would say. Um, and please, if you have any questions, please send them my way. It's definitely, it's definitely easier for me to respond to questions than to just kind of talk, talk, talk at you guys. Um, and if you, if you have questions, please text them to 813-330-0176 with your name, and I will be sure to get that question out for you. Again, the number is 813-330-0176, and please give your name when texting. Awesome, cool, thank you. Yeah, so acting and arts and medicine, a lot of people kind of give me a double take, or they say, what, what, what is that? <laughs> um, so I've wor I do work as an artist, 
the healthcare settings, the hospital, done work in prison facilities with um, girls who are in juvenile detention facilities, um, schools for at-risk youth, and I've also traveled and worked in Northern Ireland um, doing similar work, um, visual arts in hospitals there and, and music at senior day centers, as well as um, had the incredible honor of working with a couple different dance companies for adults with mental disabilities in all across Northern Ireland. Um, and then another thing that I've done in Gainesville is dance for Parkinson's disease. And I had the opportunity to carry that over into my work in Northern Ireland as well, which was so cool. Um, so yeah, it's been amazing. When I was when I was nine years old, I announced that my future was as follows. I said I was going to be a star on Broadway and then go to Harvard Medical School and become an obstetrician. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I spent my whole life knowing that I loved acting and wanted to be an actor, um, but I also was so fascinated by medicine and loved, loved, loved babies and still do. Um, and so I, so I said I wanted to be on Broadway and then be an obstetrician and have a family. <laughs> um, and then when I got to UF, I discovered the Center for Arts and Medicine and had this huge epiphany and just realized that everything I am passionate about can exist under one umbrella. And so, I mean, what, what a gift, right? I mean, I feel like so many people spend their whole lives figuring out what they want to do and how they can go down a path to love their life. And so to figure it out at such an early stage in my life um, was really special. And so I was able to spend all four years of college basically living my dream, but as a student. So I was acting and working in the hospital and, as I said, prison settings and, and doing research and all these things while pretty consistently being in shows. So so while while I was in school, I was very fortunate to pretty much do one show after another and so very very lucky and then as mentioned about halfway through college I started working at the Hippodrome Theater and yeah so and I did a bunch of shows there and then I also worked recently at Free Fall Theater in St. Pete which is really close to you guys um, I was just in Marie Antoinette down there so not sure if anybody caught that one um, but if you did cool <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I guess I don't really need to talk about myself, but um, something. So we have our first question. Oh, if we I have might a question. Interrupt you. Um, Lily would like to know if you sing as well as act. Hey, Lily. Yes, I do sing. Um, people in my family always joke and say I was singing before I could talk. <laughs> um, so definitely always singing and. Um, Oh, my mom would tell you this is kind of weird, but so some people talk in their sleep. Apparently, I sing in my sleep. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. So, yeah. <laughs> and and in addition to all of the, the visual arts and theater work I've done for healthcare settings, I also have done a lot of singing in the hospital and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, lots of musicals growing up and anything like that. And we have okay. another question from Giuseppe. Do you ever get nervous when you perform? And go Gators. <laughs> yeah, go Gators. <laughs> um, yes. It's, there's not really one, one specific direct answer to that. Um, but yes. So <laughs> I definitely get nervous. Um, if, I'm, if I'm in the midst of a run of a show, I'll usually be nervous for the first couple previews and the opening night of the show. Um, but once once I get into the groove of the show, typically I have um, I like to have lots of pre-show rituals and routines of things that I always do before the show, and um, so that kind of grounds me into the space and gets me physically, mentally prepared to step on stage. And typically, typically going through pre-show routines grounds me enough where I'm not I'm not nervous or anxious to go on stage but there's always there's always a tinge of excitement and I think that's a really healthy energy to to dive in with um, but something that's really really important for me about having a pre-show routine is it allows me to be 
spontaneous and present in the work that I do on stage. So, so doing something that is routine oriented before I go on stage allows me to let things kind of change every night on stage, which is really cool to, to experience. Um, and in terms of auditioning, it's always different. Sometimes I go in for auditions and I just, I'm just myself and I don't wear makeup and I just do my thing and kind of with, it's not that I don't care, but it's about having a carefree attitude and being able to just let it go. Um, and there's something about that that is so liberating. Um, but sometimes, you know, if, you know, the biggest audition of your life comes up and it's really impossible to go in with that mentality, that happens too. And then sometimes, you know, kind of middle of the road is just, you know, sometimes you don't have space to warm up. So you don't necessarily know what's going to come out of your mouth when you open your mouth to start singing or, um, you walk in the room and you get an energy from the casting team on the other side of the table that you didn't expect, or sometimes it's so warm and you feel like you're talking to your best friends and then there's nothing to be nervous about. Um, so it's, there's, there's no one set answer to that, but yes, I do get nervous and, um, pursuing acting professionally does not by any means mean that I am the most confident and don't get nervous because actually um, confidence is a huge thing that I personally have to work on. And a lot of the people, the Broadway stars that I look up to um, actually are really insecure. Um, so a lot of people will say to me, oh, you know, you have to be so confident and, and, you know, never get nervous. And I think that's, that's that's false for me and um actually i think being human and allowing yourself to be uncomfortable and nervous and scared and insecure um it it that's kind of what fuels art to me so so yeah so i, I definitely get nervous a lot a lot but but it's would, it's worth pushing through you would never know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of times people have told me after an audition, oh, you seem so comfortable and confident, but what they had no idea about was that I was having an internal anxiety attack the whole time. So you just you just never know what, what people are perceiving, and um, yeah, I, I, the, the advice I give most often is just to be yourself, and don't try to be what you think people want you to be, just be who you are, because that is enough and it's not. And if it's not, then it's just not the right opportunity for you and the right opportunity will come along. Um, this past summer, I had a few opportunities to work at different theaters and one opportunity I hadn't heard back yet, but it was kind of my number one. And I had already heard back from this other theater and so I had an offer from the one theater and I was waiting to hear from the other theater and I just, I had to go with my gut. And so I, I really was holding out for this other theater that I really wanted to work at. And so I very respectfully said, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm no longer available. Sometimes you have to say, or sometimes you just have to have a really honest conversation and that's okay too. And the artistic director of that theater was so understanding. And it turns out I got the job that I was really hoping for. Yay. And so that was really exciting and, and, and worth you know, the risk and going with my gut. Um, and also it turns out that that theater ended up having to close down their season, the one that I kindly said thank you, but no thank you to. Um, so you just you just never know, but I think everything always always works out in some way, even if you can't anticipate it. So sure. we have a lot yeah. of like five questions. Oh my gosh. Well, I will <laughs> Wait, stop blabbering. <laughs> Um, I had a question. What is your favorite accompl accomplishment throughout your whole career? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, oh, well, I would say it's probably the research work that I've done on suicide prevention. So um, about two and a half years ago, I lost a friend to suicide and um, I had been doing a lot of theater for health work. Um, so utilizing theater to promote health and wellness and have uncomfortable conversations and stuff like that. Um, so dealing with things like addiction and stress and coping with stress and using theater to kind of tackle those issues. Um, 
And so I talked to my team and I created a project called Suicide Prevention Through Theater Intervention and developed a research study as a university scholar and did the work. Um, and then I had the great honor of presenting it at the International Culture, Health and Wellbeing Conference in Bristol in the UK um, this past summer before I did my theater work. Um, so that's probably probably my my favorite accomplishment because well it was it's also probably the most challenging thing I've ever done for many different reasons but to be able to honor the memory of my friend and know that um, the work that I was doing was hopefully making a difference and for the greater good um, that's that's probably my favorite I mean I can talk about fun shows that I've done or or shows that have been very meaningful but but that project is definitely probably my my number one accomplishment. <laughs> Very cool. Congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank um, you. Alexis would like to know, what is the hardest role you have ever played and why? Ooh. Oh, gosh. Hardest role I've ever played. Um, the one that's coming to mind is also one of the most fun roles that I've ever played, um, but I before I graduated school, I had the opportunity to play the fool in King Lear, which is typically played by a boy. Um, so um, it wasn't really clear if I was playing it as a boy or as a girl. So I kind of went with this idea that this fool that I was playing was kind of gender neutral and um, didn't identify one way or another, um, which was really interesting to explore as an actor and also cool to know that I was honoring equality and hopefully sending that message across from the stage every night. Um, but that was really challenging because it was very physically demanding. Um, I think people tend to not recognize how physically demanding acting is even when you're not dancing. So, so playing the fool, I basically had to be in a squat for two and a half hours every night. Um, so I had to oh build up. Yeah. So luckily, you know, I run and I do yoga. So my legs are pretty strong, but I had to build up an extreme level of leg strength and core strength to hold myself up. And, and so, um, you know, at one point I was playing kind of a little boy who was jumping around and then throughout the rest of the show, I was playing an ethereal spirit. So I was constantly like, um, floating in space and very low to the ground and, and moving in, a, in that kind of squatted position. And so really, um, really relying on my leg strength and going to the chiropractor and, I bet. and, and, you know, kind of accidentally injuring my hips a bit. It took a while for my hips to heal from that. Um, so, you know, you, you learn, you learn what compromises you make as, as an artist, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely challenging because not only are you dealing with Shakespearean language, which I love, and, and fortunately I've, I've had the training to back me up on that, um, but so, so the speech and the movement and um, balancing the relationship with the audience as well as the relationship with the other characters on stage was really interesting to explore and experience. Um, so sometimes in Shakespearean work, um, characters have relationships that break the fourth wall, which is the barrier between the audience and the actors. And so to navigate when to break that wall and when to maintain the security of the wall behind with your fellow actors is kind of something to explore as well. Um, but yeah, playing the fool was the first time I think I started to really let myself fall and, um, be okay with maybe failing. And so that was really liberating and kind of set me on the path that I'm on now with this, this idea that, you know, it's okay to mess up. It's okay not to be perfect. And that's a huge, just huge you. thing. Oh, it's it huge, okay. huge learning. And it's, it's a lifelong learning. It's always going to be a struggle and, and something to work on. But if you can let go of the need to achieve perfection, your life will change. And so I wish that for all of you, whoever's listening, whoever's not listening, I wish that for all of you. <laughs> so um, I think yeah. that's amazing advice. Yeah. Our next question is from 
Elena. Hey, Elena. I was wondering what an average day is like, especially when working on a show. And oh, yeah. following Elena, we have two more questions. Okay. So an average day when doing a show, um, there are two ways to answer that. One is while being in school, and another is just every day. So I think I'll kind of gloss over both for you. So I started working professionally while I was still in school. So an average day was waking up at 6.30 in the morning and getting ready for my day, starting class at 8.30 in the morning, being in classes and training all day, sometimes going back and forth between the hospital while in classes, um, working with patients or driving over to the prison facility I mentioned and then back to school. Um, and then sometimes in meetings either at school or at the hospital. And then um, if I had time, then I would go to the gym and typically swim. I, I um, used to swim and so I typically incorporate that into my pre-show ritual if I can. Um, so any, any form of physical activity though, so definitely at least five minutes of running, some push-ups, some yoga, anything to connect my body to my breath, um, and typically being outside. So, so anything in nature is really good. Um, and then getting to the theater pretty early to then continue warming up in the space and then, you know, putting on makeup and getting ready for the show, um, and sometimes there's a fight call if there's fight choreography. So you have to go down to the stage and go through all of the fight sequences in the show. Um, and then going down and finishing getting ready and then doing the show and then leaving the theater and sometimes seeing people at the stage door who want to say hello, which is always so lovely. Um, and then going home and sometimes eating and then sometimes spending a lot of time doing homework and studying <laughs> and doing research and stuff like that and then doing it all over again. So that's kind of the crazy version of being a student and working professionally. Um, if you can do it, do it. But I definitely wouldn't recommend opting to do that. Um, just live your life and take it easy because you deserve to take it easy. Um, <laughs> So, but yeah, um, it, in a, in a day-to-day -day show life, um, you know, you might, you probably want to sleep in because you're doing show kind of late at night. So it's also hard to wind down after doing a show. So after a show, you know, you might go get something to eat or watch a movie with your family or read a book or do some work. Um, so it tends to push back the bedtime, which is hard for me because I'm such a grandma. <laughs> I'm like 90 years old on the inside and I like to go to bed early. So sometimes when I'm in a show, it feels like my bedtime is when the show is starting. <laughs> oh, I so bet. then by the time I get out of the show and have to wind down, it's, it's definitely a later night. So then sometimes I'll try to sleep in. Um, sometimes I'll get up and I'll go to yoga in the morning. Um, and then I love to cook and to bake. So I love spending time in the kitchen. Um, and yeah, just sometimes, you know, it's also going to auditions while you're in a show. So, um, yeah, and any, any classes that are going on, it's always important to continue training even when you finish school. Um, and then, yeah, getting to the theater early, making sure you're well fed, um, and then warming up and exercising and breathing and everything like that. And then doing the show and then doing it all over again. Um, and typically Monday is the day off for a professional theater, um, especially if it's part of the union. So Monday is kind of the weekend. Um, but yeah, eight shows a week is no joke, <laughs> especially when you're in school. <laughs> keeps, you, keeps you busy and on your toes for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Ha would like to know, what's your favorite Broadway show growing up and who is your biggest role model? Oh my gosh. Um, oh gosh. One of my favorite shows, this is so cliche, but Wicked, I mean, it's, it's everybody's favorite, so I hesitate to answer that question. Um, but when I saw the show, I, I was taken to another world and something about the character of Elphaba, who's the Wicked Witch, something about her character and her story resonates with me so clearly. Um, and just, I don't know, it's, it's a story that I would love to tell as an artist. Um, 
also currently, obviously, Dear Evan Hansen is a big deal right now. Um, but for me, it's really important to me to love that show and support that show because of, you know, my passion for mental health and suicide awareness and prevention and all of that. So, so I, I love that there's a show out there right now that does that. Um, so it's, it's actually kind of when I, when I first heard about the show, I, I almost felt like, wait, that's my show, <laughs> you know, because it's so in line with the work that I've done. So, so that one's really special. And then I forgot the other part of the question. Oh, role model, role model, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so one of my biggest role models, I would say, is Laura Osnes, who I think a lot of people know her as the princess of Broadway. She was Cinderella, and she's done a lot on Broadway. Um, but the reason she's a role model to me actually has nothing to do with her talent. I mean, she's extremely talented, don't get me wrong, but the reason she's a role model to me is because of who she is as a person. Um, so as I mentioned before, confidence has always been something that I have to work on. And, um, and I, I value being a good person above anything. And I went through a time where there were some people who were not the kindest to me. And I kind of took a vow of humility and said, I never ever want to be like that or make anybody feel the way that these people have made me feel. And so at that point I said, I'm going to focus on being humble. But what happened as a result of that is the few ounces of confidence that I did have kind of just whew, left me completely. And so I just lost every ounce of confidence that I had and was having this crippling anxiety in auditions and when singing and I couldn't use my voice anymore and and it was it was really a scary thing to go through um but then I discovered an interview with Laura and I saw this gorgeous kind gentle soul of a human being who is successful and doing what she loves on Broadway but she's also a beautiful kind human being and so kind of following her journey a bit really kind of brought me out of that kind of struggle that I was in. And it's it's still a challenge for me. I'm, I'm constantly finding that balance between believing in myself enough to pursue what I want to do, but also being a grounded, kind, humble human being, which is number one for me. Um, and hopefully I achieve that. Um, I can't speak to that, only other people can. But I've hopefully... known you a long time. <laughs> And I would never think anything different that you have always been kind and humble and confident. May not be on the inside, but on the outside, you possess it 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's really kind and reassuring. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so, so following Laura's journey really inspired me to kind of pick up my bootstraps and keep going and to honor who I am at the core and, and realize, oh, I can be me and still do what I love. So if that resonates with you and that's something that you also have struggled with, be you and you can do it because you are yeah. enough. It's important yeah. to be comfortable in your own skin. For sure, for sure. And um, I've actually had the opportunity to meet her and perform with her. And we have had this weird pattern of running into each other. And so so it's it's weird to go from, you know, regarding her as someone who I really looked up to, to now someone who I run into at the bookstore and we have great conversation. And, you know, we've been a part of the same performance for an event. And, um, and so... It's been a, a real blessing to connect with her and, and, you know, for her to hold my hands and say, you can do it. Um, I mean, we wept together in her dressing room <laughs> once when we first met and, and it was just such a, such a beautiful kind of validating, reassuring experience. So, so it's, it just goes to show, find the people who, who fill you up and find the people who are like you and, and know that they're out there. Find your tribe. It's really, really important because the business can be isolating, the city can be isolating, um, but but it's possible to do what you love and still maybe be a quieter, more reserved human being who's not out there and, you know, maybe something, not that everybody's out to get someone, but, you know, I, I'm not the type of person that is going to push my way to the top. I'm, I'm always going to cheer the person on auditioning before and behind me more than I am myself, so, um, but... Yeah, just, just be who you are and look up to people who resonate with you. Um, so, yeah. 
So we are here with Ariel Reif, and if you have any questions, 813-330-0176. Please let me know who you are in the text, and I will be happy to get that out. We have about 15 more minutes, so if you have that burning question, 813-330-0176. Um, questions? Emily, I think she was asking if you have another question. Have one as of right now. Okay. okay. Um, one thing I, I was hoping to cover, as long as we're waiting for more questions, um, is the topic of self-care. Um, that's something I'm super passionate about. Um, I kind of spent the first, well, I guess the majority of my life so far until the last couple of years, um, just doing everything for everybody else and nothing for myself and letting people walk all over me and and wanting to care for everybody but not knowing how to care for myself um and then i started to learn the art of self-care and value it and um you know something that's really important to me is to share that you cannot pour from an empty cup so you have to find ways to fill up your own cup so um I just, I like to encourage people to ask yourself this question, who I learned, this, this is something I learned from someone I've worked with in the arts and medicine field, who is one of my favorite humans ever, she's amazing. Um, but anyway, the idea is to ask yourself, what do I need to be well? And just really think about it for a second, and it can be so simple as a spoon of peanut butter, a sip of water, a run, yoga, um, a book, it can be so simple, but ask yourself, what do I need to be well? And do it, you know? Sometimes you can't, you know, fly to Aruba or, <laughs> you know what I mean? But but you, you can absolutely get a sip of water. You can stop what you're doing to go to the bathroom, take a breath. Um, so. That, that's so. a very good question. Um, I One of the classes that I teach leadership, one of the assignments has a similar question for a morning focus question of mm -hmm. what do you ask yourself every morning? And that sort of yeah. like gets the pep in your step and make sure that you're keeping yourself healthy and on par. Yeah, it's, it's so important, especially if you're interested in the acting business because you're expending gargantuan amounts of energy. I mean, it is not normal what we do. <laughs> it's not human. <laughs> like, no one should go through the kind of stress or, or exerting gravity. the kind of energy. Yes, exactly. But, I mean, you, you have to find what fills you up, what fills your soul, what makes you happy, what gives you energy. And if it's spending time alone, spend time alone. I, I need a lot of alone time. And, and it's not to shut people out. It's just, it's just what I need to be well, and that has to be okay. Um, and we you know, find questions. people. Oh, we do. Good. Yes. Um, Brinley um, would like to know what inspired you to become an actress? So, good question. Um, I think what we were talking about before is that I started acting when I was six, and I just asked my mom if I could, if I could, and then I, I did my first show when I was six and a half. So, for me, that's a bit too young of an age to remember what ignited that. Um, but I can tell you now what inspires me to act is um, to tell stories and to honor people and their stories. Um, so I'm really passionate about doing theater that has a really important message or invokes change or tries to or um, or memorializes something or someone. Um, so. So yeah, honoring people and their stories and trying to use art to mirror the human experience is what is the most amazing to me. So we have an excellent question from Miss Lindsay, who I've actually hey, had in class. Awesome. Uh, she would like to know, um, well, she's always wanted to pursue acting, Do but it. as being a homeschooled student, she really has not, um, she's never been able to be in a school play. So oh. is it ever too late? Oh my gosh. First of all, it is never too late. Literally, being in the theater is a timeless career. 
there are people who act until the day they die, literally. You can start young and go that long, or you can do something else and come into it later in life. There is no one path. That is a hugely valuable lesson that I've learned. Is there's no one path. There's no right or wrong. Your path is your path. So there is no wrong time or right time, and it's never, ever, ever too late to start. So if it's something you're passionate about, absolutely go for it. Um, and sometimes, even though you're homeschooled, there are probably schools who, if you reach out to the drama department, you could probably audition for them, um, especially if it's in the same county where you're homeschooled. So if, I think this is this is Pasco County, right? Yes. So look up the, the different high schools or whatever level you're at in Pasco County and, and reach out to the drama teacher and see if you can if you can audition for their shows or do community theater. It's there's never a wrong time and there's there's never there's never a bad thing to do. So, you know, just because community theater isn't unionized or professional, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean some of the most beautiful productions I've seen are in the middle of nowhere, you know? Um, so you can absolutely create and be an artist and do what you love, no matter where you are, no matter how old you are, no matter where you are in life or what you're doing, you can absolutely go for it. And Lindsay, I can make a connection for you with um, a local theater that's off of uh, 54 called Dream House. Um, it's a cute little theater and I can definitely make that connection for you. Um, so I think that this is a fantastic question to help us come to a close. Um, what are, this is from Alexis. Awesome. Um, what are some rituals you do to make sure you're happy and comfortable with yourself every day? Ooh, <laughs> ain't that the question? <laughs> um, so it's a process. Um, there's no one answer to that question. Um, and what I would say is try not to define it. Just try to notice for yourself. For me, um, there have definitely been times where I need routine. And so I'll cling on to a routine to make sure I am at my best and doing what I need to be well and to feel the best. And oftentimes for me, that revolves around movement and stillness, which is, as I'm saying it out loud, a really interesting contrast. Um, but same thing with my pre-show rituals. So yoga, running, swimming, um, eating really well, um, and just taking care of my body is a huge part of what keeps me grounded. Um, because what you put into your body and how you use your body affects everything else in your life. Um, so that's something that's really important to me. Um, but yeah, uh, journaling, writing, Singing for no reason. Oh, sing. <laughs> um, Would you like to sing us a little song? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know how to say no in the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm not saying no because I don't want to. I'm saying no because I'm not where I am. Is I'm not in a space where where I can without. Um, disrespecting other people who are around me. Um, <laughs> it's all good. But another time, I promise. <laughs> um, sorry. But yeah, so, so you know, anything that reminds me of who I am. So singing, getting in nature, just going and sitting by the water. Anything water um, is really important to me. So going and sitting by a lake or standing outside in the rain for a few minutes. Um, but being in nature is something that really grounds me. Um, spending time with family. So especially now that I'm in New York, um, it's hard to be far away from nature and calm and family. And so um, if anybody is thinking of moving to the city, just just know that it's okay to get out of the city and get out of the city when you need to get out of the city. Um, so I also have a brother who's much younger than me. And so it's really important to me to maintain our close bond. And so... So I definitely make an effort to go home and visit as much as I can, um, especially because it's harder for my family to come here. Um, but yeah, so those are those are some things that I that I do regularly or or go through phases of doing regularly. But what what I would say more presently is, don't plan what you need to fill yourself up or to love who you are and what you do. Just 
try to find a place where you can be so mindful that you can reflect and recognize in each moment what you need to achieve that and to feel that. And then do That's that. awesome. Awesome advice. Um, yeah. I have one last question I'm going to sure. throw in there because I think Elaine is asking a great one. Um, she'd like you to elaborate just a little bit more about your art and medicine career and oh, what you yeah. do for hospitals and children. Okay, sure. Um, so it's definitely a big Thing to explain um, but basically I work as an artist in healthcare settings so I think you're asking specifically about the hospital so I'll keep it to that um, so in the hospital I've done things like music singing playing instruments um, visual art painting drawing crafting crocheting um, woodwork all sorts of things paper making oral history meditation all sorts of things um, poetry, writing, everything, you name it. Um, all of this, um, I've worked as an artist in the hospital doing these things. Um, and as you know, in other various settings that are centered around health and well-being. Um, but I mean, at the root of everything we need, it's creation. And so to be able to bring that to vulnerable populations is so rewarding and such, such an honor. Um, it's really special. And then you asked specifically, specifically for kids. Um, so painting workshops are really fun on the pediatric unit um, and stuff like that. I always say I work with children of all ages. So a lot of times um, I'll get stopped in the elevator of the hospital in my, in my apron that I've painted and decorated and people say, oh, you're going to work with the kids? And I say, I work with children of all ages. I've worked with, <laughs> I've worked with babies in the NICU all the way up to people Aww. at the end of their life. Um, so... So yeah, I think, and that's, that's also just another fun thing to share is just, you know, let yourself be a child at every age. <laughs> it's um, not a bad thing at all. Not at all. Because thank yeah, you just, so much. Thank it's, you so much for having me. Pleasure, um, to learn more of what you do on a day to day basis and what makes you you. I think you've provided our students with some awesome um, lifelong knowledge that they can put to use now about being, you know, healthy and mindful and, you know, um, do they need to be well? I think that's an awesome question. Yeah, um, because you are enough and just being you is enough. So be you. <laughs> exactly. And on that note, thank you everybody for joining us today for our uh, kickoff of the Virtual Great American Teach-In for 2017. Please check out our website for upcoming events this week as every day we have one or two speakers and I will be seeing you soon. Have an amazing day. This has been Mrs. Stern. Bye.